Hello, and welcome to this Sunday, May 12th, 2024 edition of the Fab Five. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist here at EarningsBeats.com, and uh, it's my pleasure to join you today and give you five stocks that I'm keeping an eye on. And I thought what we would do today is something a little different. I'm going to give you one stock from five different chart lists that we keep at EarningsBeats. Uh, we keep in um, chart lists, it's kind of like an organized list or a watch list, um, but we do different chart lists for different reasons. So for instance, we have a strong earnings chart list, which tracks companies that have uh, you know beaten Wall Street estimates as far as revenue and earnings go, um, also have good um, uh, technical track records, their chart looks good technically. Um, we have uh, other chart lists like uh, the strong AD or the strong accumulation distribution chart list. We have another earnings AD chart list. So that's earnings AD accumulation distribution, uh, which features companies that uh, do extremely well the day after they report earnings. So the first market action after the earnings report, um, we measure how much these stocks go up from the opening bell to the closing bell. And so the EADCL, our earnings ADCL, or earnings AD chart list, um, features the best of those companies, the ones that have done the best the day after earnings come out. Anyway, I'm going to go through a number of these with you. So I'm going to start off first with a company that uh, um, is from our, I think this one came from our, yeah, this one came from our EADCL. So this one, uh, if you can... See right here, you see that big hollow candle? I'll blow this chart up so you can maybe get a little better look at it. But right here, big hollow candle moving from probably 1840 at the open to above 1960. This uh, moved up more than 5%. I don't know exactly how much, maybe 6 7%. But that move up um, was enough to get it onto our earnings AD chart list. And whenever I see earnings... Um, and a candle like this, when, when the stock comes back down to the lower end of this um, candle trading range um, from earnings, from the earnings date, I believe the reward to risk to jump in is the best that you're going to get. So in this case, this stock was recently up at $20. So my target would be $20, but buying it anywhere in the low 18s, you can keep a very tight stop on any move to the downside. And at the same time, you've got room for the stock to run back up and test the recent highs. Now it's in an uptrend and I expect it's gonna break back out to the upside again, but my initial target would be just the top uh, or the top of this trading range, which would be near that $20 level. The uh, second stock that I have here, which is uh, Impinge PI, this one is from our strong earnings chart list. And again, if I focus in, I think you can probably tell which day earnings came out. The big, big volume down here at the bottom, along with this huge Marabozu candle. If you're not familiar with the Marabozu candle, this is where a stock basically opens on its low of the day and closes on its high of the day. So the entire candlestick is simply a hollow rectangle. Um, these tend to be extremely bullish candles because think about what happens after earnings come out and the stock gaps up and, and folks are chasing. They're, you know, buying the stock, um, you know, thinking that the, you know, it's going to continue to go up. You get all this demand. Market makers are on the other side, on the short side. And that's why most stocks will go back and fill their gap. They'll go back to the close from the prior day because market makers have a financial investment here on the short side, and they normally have the capital resources to gain control of the action early and drive prices down. In this case, they couldn't. The demand was so great that any market makers that were shorting at the opening bell ended up having to cover and take a loss. So that's really a significant candlestick for serious demand. So if we get a pullback on uh, PI impinge at some point down the road, maybe right around that 20-day moving average, I'm going to say somewhere in the 145 to 150 area, I think we'd probably bounce off of that, maybe push back up toward the recent highs, 
somewhere down the road, we might actually go all the way back down to the uh, top of this gap support here uh, at 130. And that would be a very strong buy for me if we ever get back down to that level. It may not go back down. We may simply keep moving up. But just know that is the absolute best place to enter. The last thing I'll mention about this, because I've talked about it before, is I have a trading strategy. And one of the trading strategies I use with earnings is when you gap up, do you gap up above the prior high candle body? In this case, we did. That to me is a bullish sign right off the bat. Doesn't mean that we're gonna go straight up that day like we did, but it does give me a much more bullish feeling about the stock when we clear candle body resistance on earnings and on that gap. The opposite is true, by the way, if you look back and you're looking at key support and you gap below that support level, I would be, I would tend to be more bearish that stock going forward. All right, keep moving. Next up, American Express. So American Express, and by the way, some of these stocks could be on multiple chart lists. They don't have to just be on one. But American Express is on our strong AD chart list. And so here is the AD line. The, this is the uh, accumulation distribution line. So this goes up whenever um, the close is in the upper half of a candle body. So what this is telling us by this going up repeatedly throughout the last six, seven months is that many times uh, we're seeing strength in uh, American Express shares in the afternoon. And we're closing either at highs or at least in the upper half of the candle body. And so it's just a sign to me of accumulation in a stock. And look at this. I mean, this is one of my favorite stocks. They came out with earnings back in April, probably about three weeks ago, maybe three and a half weeks ago, had a big move up, made a breakout, came back down, tested the 20 day. And on Friday, we just broke out again. Keep this one on your radar. I really like AXP. Next, Wayfair. This one is from our short squeeze chart list. We have a chart list that probably has about 40, 45 stocks on it right now. They, they are the most heavily shorted stocks in the market. Now, most of the time, I want nothing to do with these stocks because they're being heavily shorted. Many of them are downtrending. The only time I have any interest in these stocks is when they are making breakouts and we're starting to see volume expand because that can trigger a short squeeze where a lot of the short sellers are forced to begin covering. The other thing is, if you're making a breakout to a multi-month high, you're gonna have a lot of technical buyers jumping in. So you've got the, the regular longs that are following chart patterns jumping in, and then you've got folks that have, sh that have short sold these companies that are forced to go back in and buy. When we buy a stock, when we go long a stock, the most money we can lose is what we put into the stock. If this stock is $10 and we decide that we're gonna buy a thousand shares, it costs us $10,000. If the absolute worst happens and we hold it and hold it and hold it, it ends up going bankrupt and we get nothing for it, the most we can lose is 10,000. If you short a stock, you are selling it first. You're borrowing it and then you're selling it. So your proceeds are 10,000 in that same example. But what if the stock goes from 10 to 100 and you have 1,000 shares? You're gonna have to buy the 1,000 shares when it's at 100. Or if it goes to 110 or 120, your risk is unlimited. That's the difference between short selling and going long. When you go long, the amount that you can lose is fixed by whatever you invest. As a short seller, your, sa your sale is complete at the beginning. You haven't bought it yet. You have to buy it back and then return those borrowed shares. So where are you going to buy it back? Well, that's the million dollar question. Here you can see Wayfair. I'm, I'm going to annotate this because there are a couple things I like on this chart. Number one is that if you look at $70, that's where we had gapped down way back here. We gapped lower and then sold off. Came all the way back up, failed at 70. Went back down. Came all the way back up, failed at 70. Went back down. Look at what we did on Thursday of last week. We closed above 70. We pulled back on Friday 
But if we can turn around and move back up again, I'm going to be watching the volume. You cannot have a short squeeze without heavy volume. This is how, you know, most of the time I have the PPO at the top of my chart. I don't care about the PPO. The only thing I care about is price action and volume. And in this volume, you'll see this line going across here. It's a 50-day moving average of volume. When we see that volume expand, like it did just recently, that starts to look more and more like a short squeeze candidate. Now, by breaking out, what this means is that anyone who has shorted Wayfair since back in mid-September, anybody, every single short seller is losing money. And so as price jumps, if the volume starts to expand, it starts to look more and more and more like a short squeeze. And the thing that gets exciting to me is that the next key area of resistance isn't until you get to 86. This could potentially be a very quick trip from 73 to 86. If we get another breakout and that volume, if you look in the morning and the first 30 minutes, it's already at three or four million shares and we're breaking out, that's a pretty good signal that we could have a short squeeze underway. And that is normally when prices just go straight up. So I wanted to point this one out. This is part of our short squeeze chart list. The last one I have for you is on our seasonality chart list. So every month we give our members 20 stocks that love that particular month. In this case, uh, I'm gonna talk about Live Nation, LYV because it loves the month of May. And I'll show you the seasonality chart in a minute. But look at what's already happening here in early May. Live Nation finished the month of April at about 88.75, maybe just a little bit below 89. We're already at 97. So we've already started off the month pretty well. And you can see five of the six days, five of the last six days were hollow candles. We're not seeing any selling. Do you see all these red filled candles? It seems like at the start of May, that's kind of all gone away. And now all of a sudden we're seeing strength here. Now let's take a look at this seasonality chart on LYV. Here you can see, this is going back the last 12 years since 2013. And 2013 is when the secular bull market began. Starting in May, I mean, you can see the beginning of the year, not that great. But starting in May, over the last 12 years, LYV has risen during the month of May or, or risen 83% of Mays. So from the start of the month or from the end of April to the end of May, that period has gone up 83% of these months over the last 12, uh, 12 years. And down here is the average. There's the average return in May, 7.8%. But look what follows. I mean, this is a very, very strong, look at all the percentages above 50% and all these average returns that are positive. In this secular bull market, LYV typically gets going in May, but a lot of times we even continue it much later into the year. So I think this is another one to keep in mind. Um, if you like what I'm talking about, all these different chart lists that we keep, uh, a lot of the research that we do that we pass on to members, go to earningsbeats.com and start a no-cost trial. This is gonna be one of the best times to start your trial because our spring special starts in a week. It, well, it, sp it starts this week. So you can come in, kick the tires, check it out for free. And then if you like the service, this is gonna be the best deal you're gonna get all year. So we usually have uh, exceptional specials um, with our in connection with our spring special and this year is no different going to have a great sale going on. So check us out with a 30-day free trial. Come in, look at all the things that we offer our members, and then make an educated decision on whether or not you want to extend. And if you do, you'll have a great deal to do so with. Anyhow, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel. It'll really help us uh, build up our community here at, on YouTube, and we would certainly really appreciate that. Have a great rest of your weekend, and happy trading.